everyone welcome to another video i have my i need a nude palette the front kind of reminds me of this one designer that i once attended his guest lecture and some of the work that he's done involved using objects to create sculptures which that was inspired by an artist from way back in the day the name escapes me but that's for some reason what it reminds me of and i do quite like it on the inside the marketing was saying that there is a new shimmer formula and when i heard that i kind of like felt myself pass away inside because it is definitely exactly what somebody like me would really go for it is like kind of like this really really sparkly i think she calls it wet glossy or something like that but definitely just from the name of it if anybody has watched any of my videos before you probably are not surprised to hear that i'm like super excited about that uh, i think for the first shade i'm gonna go ahead and use the pink and i'll kind of build off that just kind of feeling like i'm in a pinky mood today and i really want to test out um some face products so i'm gonna use the pink so I'm gonna start off with Wit, which is that warm pink I had mentioned earlier, this one right here. And I'm just going to, I used my Rare Beauty Eye Primer and I did not set it, so I'm just going to use this. This shade is very soft. I did not set my eye primer and I used a little bit too much, so I wonder if some of the eye primer transferred to this brush and now the pigment is sticking to it. That could very well be what happened. So I'm going to switch to the other side of the brush and see if that helps because I also just noticed I may have hard panned this shade a little bit and I think it's, I think it's because I did go in a little bit heavy with the eye primer today. I just didn't really pay attention to how much I was putting on and because I didn't set it, I may have transferred some into the pan or something. Okay, I'm going to change brushes. I'm not trying to like excuse the eyeshadow palette, but I am just saying that I did actually put on too much eye primer today. So I'm going to switch to a different brush. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to go into, I'm gonna go into this shade up here. This shade looks a lot softer. The particles are much more fine. I see a lot of shadows in here that could be used for single shadow looks if you were so inclined. Yeah, it's a little bit lighter than I expected, but that's okay. I will, I can build depth on top. As you can see, I'm able to diffuse it as if it was a matte and okay, it's dark. It just catches a lot of light, but as I turn my head to the side, you can see the color of the base pigment. It leans a little bit warm, but the reflect is very cool. I hadn't yet redeemed my friends and family coupon when I got this, so I was technically able to get this for 20% off. So I did get it on Sephora instead of Ulta because of that. And I'm just going to use this shimmer shade on my lower lash line as well. I do really like covering Natasha Denona on my channel, so no regrets from me. Okay, so I just kind of applied it broadly onto the lower lash line, nothing super complicated. So I'm going to take a larger, fluffier brush, and I'm going to go into the appropriately named Fair, and I'm just going to use that to blend out the edges. I'm just using a Ruffer 27. This brush is like super, super fluffy. Fair is like a little bit more of like a warm ivory. Okay, so you can see that the look just blends out so easily. So I'm going to go into one of the darker shimmers now. I'm going to use Filigree. I'm going to use this shade. The only thing about layering so many metallics on top of each other is that you do run the risk of it feeling heavy on the eyelids, especially when you blink. Okay, yeah, that added some nice depth. And you can see the darker the darker base. Again, it's kind of it's a slightly warm chocolate base, but the reflect is cool. I am getting some fallout. I don't know if you can tell, but I am getting some fallout, so I probably should be a little more careful. The shade is a little bit more like loose and intense. Okay, yeah, I was able to minimize fallout on the left side, so it's mostly just fallout on the right side and it's, you know, it's not too bad, honestly. I will, I will live. I'm going to take a pencil brush now. I want to take that same shade and touch up the lower lash line. So that is the look so far. It is so just soft and simple and very, very easy as I'm sure you could tell. So I really wanna try one of these 
glossier shimmers now so I am going to pick a different brush just another flat dense brush and I'm going to go into I'm gonna go into Muse I think no I'm gonna go into Delilah which is over here and I'm going to just throw this on top of everything Delilah also is a little bit more indented and in, like it on um, instead of being flat in the pan it has a little bit of a dip versus the other shades either are flat or are a little bit convex I think that kind of just indicates that it does have kind of that more creamy consistency to it I'm going okay yeah it definitely feels a little bit more squishy okay this shade actually does have a base to it so I'm glad I was using a brush because had I actually used this more intensively I would have completely ruined my look so hold on okay so there's two more shades Muse is here this feels more like just your standard very sparkly metallic and then this is Sheen, and then this is Mia. And Sheen and Mia on my index and ring fingers also feel the same as Delilah. So I'm going to take Sh Mia, which has a very light, ever so slightly pink reflect to it, and I'm going to use that instead. I'm so glad I was using a brush at first, and I was thinking to myself, it just doesn't see, see the cast, it just didn't look right. Oh my gosh, I almost totally screwed that up. Okay, I'm gonna go into Mia instead. Okay, yeah, that's giving off the effect I was hoping for. Much better. Thank goodness. Okay, so this eye is looking a little bit funky because of that mishap, but that's okay. I love this. And so if you've ever used shades like the Pat McGrath shades, or if you've ever tried the shimmer shades in Flower Nose, you'll know that those are very pretty, but they feel a little bit gritty. And so if you have really sensitive eyes, I can see those being an issue. These feel completely smooth. So you can see I'm getting the glitter finish, but it doesn't feel gritty at all. So I think these will be a lot easier to use if you have more sensitive eyelids to texture so that you can get that look without actually having to feel any sort of gritty texture. Okay, so I am gonna take Delilah, but I'm gonna use it on the lower lash line. It'll be perfect there. And I also really like that unlike some other topper-like shades I've seen, these work equally well with a brush and a finger. And then I'm going to top that off with Mia. And then I'm going to take Mia on the very inner part of my lower lash line. I do want to go ahead and deepen up that pink a little bit. Or like just like go over it again, make sure it's a little bit more intense because I lost it a little bit. So I'm going to go back in with Wit and I am going to go ahead and bring that towards the inner corner. Okay, yeah, now it's, see, it's, it's building so much better now, so I think it was actually just an eye primer issue. Instead of using Mia, I want to use Sheen on the inner corner just for curiosity. We got inner corner highlights galore here, you guys. I love how this looks. The glossiness is just to die for, so I'm going to finish up my makeup. I'm actually just going to do some mascara. I'm going to finish off the rest of my makeup, and I will be right back. Okay, so this is going to be my finished look. Here is what everything looks like. I My lashes did not curl as well today, so you can barely see them, but that's okay. I You know, sometimes a little bit of mascara shows the realistic results, so... For those of you out there who prefer to see my looks with just mascara, this one's for you. Um, but that's okay. So as you can see, I added a tiny bit of eyeliner. I used the Clio Gel Presso Eyeliner. And then I also put it on the inner corner. As for the rest of my face, I am just... This was half off, so I have wanted this for ever since it first released. Um, the first three shades they released, I didn't like any of them. And then they, were, they released the extension and I was like, okay, sugar cookie is for me. So... I am testing it out. I also filmed a short video with it, so if I can ever remember to edit and upload it, that would be nice. My first impression is good so far. As for my lips, I didn't do anything terribly complicated because the look is so light. I thought maybe it'd be fun to just kind of see how light I can keep my face overall. I feel like I have like barely any makeup on, but I technically have a lot of makeup on. So I just used some lip liner and then on top of it I used the Laura Lee Los Angeles gloss in the shade Strawberry Sky. This is discontinued at this point, but as you can see it is more or less clear with a very slight warm hue. So that is just what's on my lips for some extra gloss. And that is just what everything looks like. I absolutely love this palette so far. I cannot wait to continue to work with it. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my face and I will be back for look number two. 
Hello, I'm back for look number two. I had a headband on to take off my makeup and now my bangs are extra poofy so I'm just going to leave them as is. I think I don't think I need to put anything down. I'll just kind of clip some of my other hairs out of the way. I'm actually not using any eye primer this time because I just kind of have some foundation concealer and setting spray down. I remember in China using Natasha Denona shadows without any primer. It worked just fine as well so I'm just gonna go with that and see if that works out okay. So living on the edge here a little bit. I'm going to go into the shade tender which is right down here. I'm going to use that as a base because I want to kind of see if I can use this shade with this shade and see what happens. As you saw when I was doing look number one, Delilah does have a bit of a base pigment to it which caught me off guard. So I'm going to use that today but this time I'm going to like actually use it to my advantage and as you can see my eyelid is tacky so the eyeshadow is going to stick down and it's not going to blend as readily that's completely fine because once it's all covered in shimmer you're gonna not really notice any sort of choppiness i do not like setting my eyelids because my skin is so dry i'm gonna try blowing this out a little bit more like horizontally instead of out vertically up like i usually do so for that i'm also gonna go ahead and start putting this on the lower lash line. I'm using a Sonia G Worker 1 and because it is slightly flat, I can use the very tip of it on my lower lash line and still have some precision, which is pretty cool. So you can see I'm letting the eyeshadow go out horizontal, which is why it has to go from both the lower and upper lash line. This shade does, it translates. I don't usually mind when that happens though, because obviously if you want, you can always just apply less and blend a little bit more. So as you can see, I kind of went a little messy here, but that's okay. So this eye definitely looks much messier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another brush. The powder foundation will have the coverage to effectively be an eraser. I have to do this sometimes. I just, you know, I just screw up sometimes and I just have to do this. It's fine. It happens. And there we go. That's a little bit cleaner. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go into Ella, which is... This shade here, this looks again to be like a very smooth metallic. It looks more, this looks very like a neutral brown. It doesn't really feel like it goes super warm and it's definitely not cool. I say neutral, maybe leaning closer to being warm, but the reflect is cool enough that it feels neutral. And I'm just going to put this here and start using this to blend up. So this is going to be a more intense look today and I'm stamping up with my finger. Now this shade does have a pretty intense base on its own so I'm kind of sort of covering up the matte shadow and that pretty much transferred from my finger to my eyelid without any issue. I noticed there's no cream to powder mattes in here. So if you don't like cream to powders, then this might be a palette for you to consider. I'm now going to take the shade Delilah. This was the shade I was going to use in the first look, only to realize it has a cast. So I'm going to use this today, and the cast is going to actually be like more appropriate for this look. Delilah is definitely a really great shadow to just use on its own. If and I am very happy to see that I can use both a brush and a finger with these wet glossy formulas. It's so easy to use. So I'm going to take Whisper on the lower lash line. This is one of those more kind of smooth metallics. I'm going to let the lower lash line be a little bit more quiet today. And I just love how I really can just use any of the shades in this palette with any other shades. I can use as many shades as I want or not. I do think these tones are very, very, very beautiful. Okay, and I am going to take a tiny, tiny bit of Silhouette, which is the darkest brown. I'm just going to use that right in the outer corner. I'm just going to use it for some extra depth. I'm not going to do eyeliner today. Fair is a little bit more warm, so I think it's a really great shade to use to just kind of add a tinge of warmth and vitality to the edges of your look if you feel like you're looking a little bit dead. And I'm just using this shade to blend out everything. I'm going to use my finger to apply a little bit more Delilah because it is so pretty. And now I'm going to pick an inner corner highlight. And I think for that I want to go ahead and I'm going to try Muse because it actually it looks a little bit dark but at the same time it doesn't have very much base pigmentation. This might actually work. It is a little bit loosely pressed but because my skin is not set, it should stick down pretty good. Yeah, it's not really leaving too much of a cast if I apply it like this. That is so pretty. And 
and I am gonna try and blend that inner corner in just a little bit more. I will say if you're gonna use this Muse shade and your eyelid is kind of set or feels kind of mattified, you may need to use a tacky base underneath. The shade is quite chunky and I can see the fallout being kind of intense if you're not careful, so bear that in mind. I feel like it's not blended into the rest of my look enough. Again, I didn't really want it to be like super pulled out winged eyeshadow. I wanted it to be just a little more soft and like blown out. I think I was able to accomplish it, but I probably could have gone further and darker because now it's a little hard to see amidst the rest of everything else. Okay, so this is gonna be my finished look. I have Cloud9 lashes from Doe Lashes on and I always seem to have trouble putting them on right when they are brand new, I guess because the band is just so rigid, so they are hanging on by a thread. So I will wrap this up quickly. For my face, I used a nice cool contour. I just mixed the two shades in the flower nose contour palette which is one of my favorites for my blush as a base blush i used this shade here it's almost like a dark berry but you can sheer it out so it's really really pretty and then to top that off i blended it out with a combination of two beige blushes i like couldn't decide which one i like better i think i just was like whatever let's like, just use both this is a new one i just got like in the past two months it's acorn beige from Peri Para. i do really like this range so i kind of tend to collect the colors and then the naming fluffy powder blush and toast this is a really great formula but it seems like it's a little hard to find sometimes now my blush is a little bit on the warm side so it really pulls the warm undertones of the colors up and out and now my makeup look looks a little bit more warm but I think it's really cool again the palette is very versatile because so many of the colors are neutral tones it means that depending on the rest of your complexion you can kind of pull the colors one way or another which is a lot of fun to play with for somebody like me uh, and then for highlighter I can't really hold it up because somehow it's completely shattered I don't know what I did it's cheap enough that I may replace it but this is the Catrice highlighter in the shade 020 supreme rose beam really great affordable option and then for my lips, after I line my lips, this is the My Melody lipstick from Romand. Very popular collab. I think it's already more or less sold out though. Um, it is the shade 17 Mellow Sugar. I was going to do a video covering these much sooner, but life kind of got in the way. So here they are. Super, super cute. So that is going to be this look. So I'm going to end here and go on to film the other video I need to film before this lash gets the better of me and flies off my face. So with that, I'm going to move on to look number three. You'll see that in a couple seconds. Hey everyone, I'm back to do look number three. I ended up not filming three times yesterday because admittedly that probably was overkill, but I also had some really important unexpected errands I had to run. So I did that and then I exercised. So I ended up wearing the second look for several hours plus sweating a lot. And I am pleased to report that, that eye the eyeshadows, even with me not really actually using primer for the second look, those eyeshadows looked pretty much fresh. And this is after sweating. So in my video talking about humidity in Guilin and stuff like that, I mentioned how the Natasha Denona mini palettes stayed on the whole day even through the humidity and heat in that area and I am really happy to see that she continues to live up to that standard with this palette so far. For this look I want to do a more structured look and I think I have in mind what I want to do so I'm going to just go ahead and get started on it before I lose my train of thought. So I'm going to start off with Silhouette which is this dark brown here. Now I've been seeing a lot of talk on YouTube of people debating if this is neutral if this is warm or cool. I disagree with both. There are definitely warm shades in here, but this palette to me is very neutral, and some of these shimmers have a slightly warmer base with a cooler reflect, but to me this palette does not actually read super warm or cool, it just reads right straight in the middle. I can definitely see why this palette has been getting a lot of buzz. It's honestly not that common to see a true neutral palette. I'm using neutral in terms of color theory here, I'm not using neutral in terms of the earth-toned brown shades that are considered appropriate for quote unquote for daily wear. I'm saying neutral in the strict definition of color theory. This definitely to me is a neutral eye palette and I really like the deluxe samples of the Urban Decay Primer Potion because it comes in a squeezy tube instead of a doe foot so I use that today. I remember not really liking that one as much as the anti-aging version and as I was applying it I remembered why so I kind of regret using that because my eyelid feels really dry now but it's too late, we're just gonna have to work with it. So I'm going to start off with the darkest shadow today and I'm going to create my angle, which is gonna sweep up today. Okay, that wasn't, that was definitely not quite what I was going for, but we can work with it. I'm gonna blend it out so I'll be able to kind of adjust the shape later. 
Yeah, I remember now I don't really like this primer potion at all. I feel like it actually makes the eyeshadow stick down worse because I feel like it just made my eyelid too smooth and dry. But it's, it's too late to change that, I'm just gonna have to work with it, so... Because I really like the anti-aging one, which if it ever goes half off, which it should in the future, I'm going to go ahead and buy another tube of that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to start with, and I'm going to switch brushes. I think I'm going to use this Hakuhodo brush. I don't actually, again, I, I, I don't have numbers on mine for some reason, but this is my favorite brush from Hakuhodo of all time currently, so I think I have three. That's how you know I like it. And I'm going to go into Tender, which is right here. And I'm going to use that to blend out Silhouette and extend it a little bit. And I'm going to try and see if I can correct the shape a little bit by using Tender as well. Yeah, I don't like this eye primer. I feel like I'm like doing a challenge mode now. Okay, so I corrected the shape so it looks a lot better now. And I do bring the eyeshadow up a little bit higher on this eye since this eye is smaller. You know, one fun thing about having eyes of this particular type is that it's very common for you to have different sized eyes. And that can also vary depending on things like how tired you are and how much sleep you got. Because like sometimes if I didn't sleep well, I'll wake up with really puffy eyelids. So it's always a surprise every single day what I'm going to get to deal with. I'm going to use this um, tiny brush from Blend Bunny. I'm just not really liking using the Sigma one right now. And I'm going to pack on silhouette even more Okay, I'm going to just leave that be for now because I am going to put a shimmer on top later. I need to use- I, I want to use Vague. I thought I said Vogue first. I, think I want to use this shade and I'm going to use it like starting from the end here. And I'm just going to start putting it where I want it. I don't want it to be like a super clean cut line, so I will blend it out in a little bit. But I just want to lay it down first. I think you can kind of tell what I'm going for now, and I'm going to use that to start blending the pink into the wing I drew earlier, and then extend the wing further out. This shade so far is behaving very nicely, I'm not really having any issues with it. So now I just need to repeat this on the other eye. I'm going to take stone and use that very quickly on the lower lash line. I'm just using the other side of the same flat brush because I am going to go over this with the pink later, so I don't really mind the two shades mixing together. Okay, so that's the lower lash line. Super simple, but at the same time, I love the soft tones. Okay, and now it is time for me to put on the shimmer, so I am going to try using Sheen. I really want to try using Sheen all over the eyelid. So I'm going to use a brush because I need to try and stick this in a like really precise way. I am going to go slightly up into the pink though. And I'm just going to fill this space, and it's just going to be basically on top of bare skin. It's not quite as um, glitzy and sparkling and glittering as like a flower nose topper, but it definitely feels a lot more smooth and comfortable. The flower nose ones can sometimes be a little bit gritty feeling on the eyelids, so it's definitely just kind of going to boil down to personal preference as well as if you have sensitive eyelids or not. These are so pretty though, like I love how this is looking. And then I do want to take a little bit of muse and put that on top right in the center for like the added sparkle effect. I'm so happy with how this is turning out. I think I'm going to go ahead and just use Sheen on the lower lash line. Yeah, do you see how it kind of catches the light occasionally? Oh my gosh, this is so pretty. And then I'm going to take Mia as my inner corner highlight just for a little change of pace. Mia is also a little bit brighter than Sheen. It does have a slight pink lean. It can also just read as like a very bright inner corner highlight. 
And then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna go into just a little bit more muse. You can see how little I'm putting on my finger. And I'm just going to add just another light layer of it. Just make sure there's, I don't know, I just, I just really like having super glittery eyelids. Okay, and that is going to be this look completed. It is so soft, very pretty. And I, as you can see, I went for something much more structured this time, which is what I have been hoping to do at least once in this video, and I'm super happy with it. I'm super happy with this, so I'm going to finish off my makeup, and I'll be right back. Okay, so excusing my messy hair, this is going to be my finished look. I do need to get a bangs trim, so I kind of tried to like sort of brush them to the side so you can kind of see my eyeshadow but here's what everything's looking like i do really like how this look turned out i think it looks really really good i did go back in off camera with a little bit more dark brown shadow to see if i could deepen things up a little bit and i was able to get it to at least look a little more even so i love everything the only thing i added to my eyes besides my mascara and lashes was some inner liner using my liquid liner for my lashes i have on the doe big cat energy lashes they are a mix of black and brown fibers so i thought they be perfect for this look as you can see they are extremely wispy and thin so they don't impede the look at all while still helping to just kind of add lashes because i don't have lashes as you can see because of the fact that my complexion is warm it really pulls the warmth in the look forward and makes my eyeshadow look warm um, i do want to do a fourth look that is using cooler complexion products for once because i just realized that all three of my looks so far all have used warmer complexion products because that's just kind of what i always end up tending to do for my blush i thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use the shade 51 from the neo nude color balms i think this one has the best formula of the three that i own because this just like made my jaw drop it's so gorgeous and i wish i could get all the other shades i did go over it just a little bit closer to my eyes with venetian rose from M Cosmetics, as you can see, this one is a little bit more neutral tone, slightly cool. So I used that just kind of up by my eyes to just tamp down on that warmth a little bit. I used the Pat McGrath highlighter in the shade Lunar Allure. I can't really hold this one up very well because it actually will fall out of the pan. I must have dropped it at some point. As you can see, it is very bright, so I used a very sheer layer really pretty though i do really like these and then for my contour i used the flower nose teddy bear contour um, and then for my lips after using lip liner as my base shade i used the kaleidos lip clay cloud lab lip clay in the shade skin ship which is makes me look a little bit dead so i went over just the center of my lips with smeared rouge which as you can see it's an extremely dark red but I love using this as a gradient lip and that's what's on my lips so I do really like these formulas and I do wish I could get more shades maybe someday have really been enjoying using this palette and I even though it's a little bit on the big side since it is a permanent palette I honestly think I am going to make this my new travel palette because then I don't have to bring really anything else aside from certain specific colors. I, I am I am in love! I love this so far! I'm so happy! Unfortunately, I cannot wear test these shades because I need to wash this off and film look number four, but I'm gonna go do that, so you will see look number four in a couple of seconds. Thank you guys so much for sticking with me so far. I Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy, so I'm gonna move on now. Hi everyone, I'm back for look number four. My eyelids are feeling a little bit dry because they have been put through the ringer for the past few days, so hopefully I don't age myself too quickly with these shenanigans, but here I am. So as I said, I'm going to do a cooler look. That's the goal. <laughs> and I'm going to try and make sure that I use complexion such that my makeup stays looking cool. Mochi stopped by and she says, hello. She wants attention. And she's going to get hair all over my face. Look at the belly! It's so soft! You are very soft. Soft! Cheeks! She always is like running around begging for attention from me, so sometimes I'll just like give her way too much attention and then she'll finally leave for a few minutes and then of course she always comes back. But sometimes if I really 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 need her to like go entertain herself for just like a few minutes I will just suddenly just like start hugging her and then she'll be like wait I did not want this kind of attention and then she'll leave so hopefully she does that now I was going to use my fingers but Mochi just chewed all 10 of them because she just wanted to and so I'm not going to use my fingers anymore so I'm just going to try and use a very firm brush and hopefully that gets the job done because like hell I'm going to stick my fingers in this palette when my cat has chewed them all up. Far too lazy to go to the sink and wash my hands. 
I think I'm gonna start off with Whisper, and if that doesn't work the way I wanted it to, I'm gonna use Delilah, because I'm not gonna swatch these shades either. I do have on the Rare Beauty eye primer this time, so I actually have on a primer that I like. Um, the nice thing about shimmers is, unlike mattes, if you screw up a shimmer and you don't like it, you can usually cover it up pretty easily with a different shimmer, so... This shade is actually a little bit lighter than I anticipated because it doesn't really have doesn't really have that much of a dark base at all. So I'm just going to make it symmetrical and I'm just going to go ahead and go straight in with the Delilah shade. So I'm just going to keep this on the inner half. And because Delilah has a base to it, I am going to go ahead and start blending that base out. You can see as I turn my head, you can see the cast. Like, I feel like there are cream shadows out there that kind of look like this. And I didn't really get any fallout either, which is nice. And I just, I do, I do think this will look a lot better with a finger, but not right now. <laughs> but you can see, I'm, I'm definitely having to press into the pan a little bit harder with a brush just to ensure I get the proper amount of pigment. But you can see it's still laying down really well, and I'm happy to report that a fallout is extremely minimal. I think I'm going to go into Travertine, which is this shade here and I'm going to use that kind of just to add some extra dimension. Okay, this shade is not much darker than Delilah, so I'm gonna scrap that plan. I'm gonna go into Filigree, which is right here. Filigree is a little bit leaning on the warmer side, but it should still work down here for some depth. I am going to start working on the lower lash line, so for that I am going to use mostly mattes for that because I just want this look to be more simple, so I'm going to go in with Tender and then I will use Silhouette to deepen up the outer corner. I don't really want the lower lash line to be like a super big explosion of sparkle everywhere. These are such gorgeous shades, especially for some reason on the lower lash line is where they just really suddenly just look amazing. They are just the absolutely perfect depth of tone for me for a simple lower lash line. And now I'm just adding that dark brown. You can see how I was able to add a soft amount of depth with Silhouette, and it's just so pretty. And I know this look is also like kind of simple, there's not really much to it, but that's like, that's like honestly, that's part of the whole appeal for me. I'm gonna take Sheen, which is the shade here, and I'm going to use this to kind of blend out the edges of Delilah. Since it's a lighter shade. And I'm using a flat but slightly less packed in brush so that the particles are better dispersed. And so now it's a lot more well blended and then lastly I'm gonna take a little bit more silhouette and I'm just going to use this brush that I used on my lower lash line to very just gently add a little bit extra darkness. Very gently, I don't want it to be out of control and get muddy and weird. I'm going to take Whisper onto the lower lash line to keep the lower lash line softer. Whisper is an interesting shade. It's not quite bright enough to be like a really impactful inner corner highlight, and it's a lot more low shine than the other um, shades in this palette, but I'm going to go ahead and use this on my inner corner. It's going to have a little bit of a cast, but I want I don't want to distract from my eyelid shades. My eyelid is the most like glistening, sparkly part of my eyelid, so I actually want my inner corner to not be as sparkling, and that way, even though there's a minor cast, my inner corner can still be brightened without actually taking any attention away from the eyelid shade. And the reason I'm not using a matte inner highlighter for that is just because I don't really like how matte inner corner highlights look on me. I know they look good on some people. I think for me it's just that like my eyelids are already so dry, I don't want to use a matte inner corner highlight shade and make my eyelid look even drier. It's like the shade almost gets brighter the more you put on. Very interesting. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more of Delilah and just make sure the two shades can blend together. Okay, so this is going to be my fourth look using mainly Delilah as the key shade and focusing on those wet glossy shades. I somehow feel like my looks for this palette were a little bit subpar technically 
vocally wise, but they all still turned out really, really nice despite me feeling like I did a subpar job. So I think that definitely speaks to the color coordination of this palette, that everything can really go well together even if you are not really doing that great of a job. It still looks good. <laughs> so yeah, that's what these shadows look like really pretty and since this is my last look of the day I will be able to get a wear test out of them I'll wear them when I work out and stuff like that and I'll be able to see how these wear and especially since Delilah is the main shade on my eyelid I will be very curious to see how it wears because I am always concerned about shades like that that feel a little bit cool or maybe borderline wet I'm always worried about those shades creasing or fading very quickly so with that being said I'm going to finish off my makeup and then I'll be back to sum up this palette Okay, so this is going to be my fourth and final look for this video. As you can see, I do have on my Big Cat Energy lashes. I actually don't have any eyeliner on today, not even on the inner corner. I just wanted to leave the eyeshadow as is. I do have some lower lash mascara on, and then I will now quickly go into my cheeks. So as you can see, I tried my best to keep my complexion a little bit cooler, and I especially have a cooler, bolder lip. So that way, now the tones are feeling a lot more cool, and now this entire look reads much more cool. Now I, unfortunately, the blush could have been way cooler, so I'm not really conveying it as well as I could have. I burned through like four or five blushes trying to get my blush to look cooler because initially I was going to use this option but it's not cool. This is actually not a cool blush which caught me off guard. Usually I'm a lot more aware of the undertones and color tones of things like revoke my BA immediately I guess because uh, I totally thought that this would work but this is actually very much warm it's just very desaturated but that all being said i decided as a result that i would going to pick this lip this is the roman blur fudge tint and cool rose up and this shade is just amazing i love this shade so much i think this shade ended up pulling everything together because this shade is cool i was basically looking for a blush that was this <laughs> i didn't have it so I'll have to pour over my collection again because chances are high that there may have been something I just missed but I was just like where's all my cool tone blush and, and why is it all pink like I need some like cool rose blushes kind of a situation like I I'm gonna look we're gonna work on this I initially tried using the Hollywood glow glide face architect highlighter in moonlit glow but it ended up still pulling a little bit warmer than I expected in contrast to everything else on my face so I topped it off with rare beauty and lighten which is literally just like stark white on me so as you can see it looks much cooler so i also have that on my nose and on my chin I, I wasn't as successful as i hoped i was but i hope you can kind of tell with this fourth look how cool my eyeshadows look just by changing what is on my face and then compare that to the first three looks i did where the eyeshadow looked a lot warmer because my face was a lot warmer and so that is why I think this palette is neutral. I don't think it's warm or cool except for those pinks. I think this palette is perfectly neutral. So if you get this palette and you're like, oh shucks, I wanted it to be a cool tone palette, use cool tone complexion products and it will become cool tones. <laughs> if you get this palette and you're like, oh, I think it's too cool for me. I don't know if I can make it work. Use warm tone complexion products. Use like a, a warm peachy or a warm coral or a bricky blush like a burnt blush, you'll immediately look like you've got warm toned eyeshadow on. It's going to be able to go either way because what shades you use on your face are going to make more prominent and pull forward different parts of the eyeshadow. So like taking Delilah for example, if I wear Delilah with a warmer blush, the warmer base pigmentation of Delilah is going to become more obvious. But if I have on a cooler tone blush, then instead the reflect of Delilah is what you're now paying more attention to on my eyes. You can still definitely see warm tinges, like I'm facing the camera and right here there's still a warm tinge. But overall, this eyeshadow look reads much cooler because of the change in application of what I did. So I think that makes this palette very, very versatile. And I do believe this palette ended up selling out, but it should restock soon. So if you do want it, I think you will be able to really play with it and tweak it to your needs. And I just realized the inner corner of my lash has decided to run away from me. Formula wise, I've not had an issue with working with any of the shades aside from when I accidentally used the worst eye primer ever. If I use the NARS Smudge Proof, if I use the Rare Beauty, or if I use nothing at all, I get 
completely it's completely fine and I do really appreciate that as you have seen I've been able to use these shades both with a finger and with a brush and without really much change on the impact the brush does require some building up compared to your finger obviously but that's completely fine and I do suspect that had I used some kind of glitter glue or stickier base underneath then it would have stuck on even better I just honestly forgot <laughs> I just wasn't thinking I forgot um and I think it's good for me to be able to thoroughly use this palette without any kind of adhesive base underneath because not everybody really feels like doing that so I guess the only thing that I would say is I do kind of wish that there was a midpoint between this shade and this shade and I think this shade and this shade are both redundant and I only needed one especially since there's this shade and I do wish the pinks maybe were a little bit different I kind of wonder if it would have been great if we have this warm pink it would have been great to have a cooler pink instead of this which is still a warmer pink so of course but of course as we know it is not a true Natasha Denona palette without at least one redundant shade pair I really really like this palette and my my current favorite palettes from Natasha Denona are like gold glam and stuff like that so this is definitely sitting up there I will do some brush swatches on my arm on like the you know the part that isn't covered in body hair I'll do some shade swatches here and they'll be brush swatches since I don't want to get my fingers into the pans today so I hope that my looks could maybe provide you some inspiration I do hope that you like it and before you guys ask no I do not have the makeup by Mario ethereal eyes to compare with but plenty of other people do I'm sure they will compare for you so again I am just always so happy to see people watching and commenting my videos I'm always so happy to see people mentioning that I'm actually like helping them somehow that makes me like extra happy so definitely leave a comment if you'd like and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video bye bye okay here are the swatches I turn the lights down slightly so top is going to be glam and bottom is going to be the I need a nude palette so as you can see here these top chocolate mattes are kind of what caught my eye first the top being the glam palette that is going to be the shade lash line and then the bottom is silhouette as you can see glam is significantly cooler and they but they both are pretty comparable now the shimmers they do read very similar as you can see here the finishes are completely different and if you were to act and if you actually own both of these palettes you will also know that the fin feel of the shadow the texture of the shadow is very different and here on the top are the lighter shades in glam and then on the bottom i have whisper muse sheen and Mia and you can see here I use brush I use brushes for these swatches now here's the other reason I don't really like to do arm swatches my skin is very dry like not just my face skin my scalp is dry my legs are crackly my skin all over my body is extremely dry so arm swatches are not super great for me because the shadows as you can see do not really stick to my skin so I think next time I'm just gonna go ahead and use one of my foundation primers on my arm because otherwise you are not gonna see anything so that is why they kind of look weak but if I turn the lights down you can see to some extent the difference in finishes here the glam metallics and glam are by and large very smooth and very metallic very beautiful and they feel very smooth and creamy on to the touch versus the uh, um, I need a nude shimmers having the variety that I've talked about in this video now I'm gonna switch to my other arm and you're gonna see I don't know why I always clench my hands but now you're gonna see here are the darker shades so these are in glam and then these are in I need a nude I, this shade here is the Lila so you can see here how the I need a nude metallics even the ones that look dark and pan especially now that you can see them swatched on my arm the base is not fully opaque now if i were to use a finger on top of eye primer on top of my eyelid it will obviously look much more opaque than this so again casual reminder my arm is not a really great canvas for swatching shadows but i think because it's a little bit more sheer you can really see the difference in how opaque these shades are because they have a lot more of a pigmented base versus these shades being a little bit more translucent and Delilah especially having that suspended glitter effect 
so you can definitely see that even though we've got a couple of similarities like i think delilah is actually a little bit similar in feel to this top shade from glam but overall they still are going to be very different in terms of finish so i actually feel like glam and i need a nude could be very easily combined to make like a mega palette and it would just be absolutely gorgeous now these mattes down here are my last comparisons and i friends stopped by to drop off something that they borrowed and when i got back to this i flipped it around because I'm an idiot. So now the top is I need a nude and the bottom is glam. So disregarding the shimmers, I flipped it. So these are both from I need a nude and they are the shades tender and mesh. Tender and mesh. I almost read that shade as something completely different. Um, and then the bottom shades are crease and transition. And as you can see, these two shades here are similar but this one here as you can see is more desaturated and pulls a little bit more cool and now by comparison it makes this shade uh tender look warm so those are my comparisons for you guys i don't know how helpful they are but that's it from me thank you guys for watching this video i'll see you guys in the next one